a script for a horror film with animals. Really big and scary, uh, deadly ones. Rabbits? Uh, uh, let's just get this over with. Night of the Lepus. Happy Easter! Easter, hop, 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 and you away! Ah, yes, nothing scarier than cute, cuddly bunny rabbits. Am I right? Well, I'm here to tell you, yes! Yes, they are! Just look at these terrifying things. Look at how they can be. We always laughed at these poor children, but they knew. They knew all along. <sighs> it's almost Halloween, so here's something to make you think of Easter. Night of the Lepus. No, Lepus. Not lepers. Though that would actually be a weird, scary film. Leprosy can be scary. <clears throat> Night of the Lepus is a 1972 Australian-American science fiction horror thriller film. Hey, that's what they call it, not me. Released by MGM and based on a novel by Russell Braddon called The Year of the Angry Rabbit from 1964. Directed by William F. Claxton and starring Janet Leigh. Yes, the infamous Janet Leigh. How'd she agree to this? Stuart Whitman, Rory Calhoun, and also Dr. McCoy from Star Trek. Damn it, Jim, I can handle tribbles, not rabbits. The story revolves around rancher Cole Hillman as he fights off an invasion of thousands of rabbits. He gets help from characters such as college president Elgin Clark and researchers Rory and Jerry. They eventually inject a serum into some rabbits, some hormones, but cute daughter Amanda keeps it as a pet. Oh, golly gee, daddy, I want this rabbit. It escapes, uh-oh, and well, they soon find unusual tracks. Could it be rabbit tracks? That stuff's delicious. This leads us all to see giant rabbits covered in blood in an old mine. Oh, it's like Night of the Living Rabbits! They get more help, and throughout the rabbits rampage and kill, they eat, kill everyone who stands in their fluffy way. The ending... They lure them to a trap, and all the evil monster rabbits are shot and electrocuted to death. Shh. I'm reviewing a really bad rabbit film. <laughs> Happy Easter, motherfucker. The end. All the carnage could have been avoided if they just got Glenn Close to help. Or even Elmer Fudd. They could have made him a 50-foot Fudd. <laughs> or better yet, this guy. Or just do what Bugs Bunny does. Dress up and lure the male bunnies away. Wow. Actually, a good bunny outfit would work on me. <laughs> oh my gosh, now that would have been a film. Bunnies versus bunnies. Pure Grunhouse, B-movie cheese. Hugh Hefner would have been great and probably approved. <sighs> we still miss ya, Hef. We still miss ya. The effects were amazing. The way they made him look giant by all those cool camera tricks, and even actors and costumes for attack scenes. So realistic. All joking aside, it's hard to make cute bunnies look like they're horrific killers. That was the major flaw in this film, the really big one. Even back then, when it was released, that was everyone's number one point of this. It was stupid, and they're not scary. You can't make bunnies scary, even if you cover them with ketchup. Besides the effects, it had a silly premise... Stiffed, contrived acting. Could you blame them? And again, it was hard to make rabbits scary. Real ones? Nah. Now creepy killer rabbit costume wearing killers, like we saw earlier. Sure. No matter how they tried, these things were cute. Ooh, jeez, this little guy looks like he needs to lay off the Cadbury eggs. Every time they'd show up on screen, I'd go, aww, instead of, yeah. Final verdict? Rabbits aren't scary, especially these ones. The film gets my special touch, and well, th 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 that's all, folks! I'm trying to thank you, you pointed-eared hobgoblin!